we love our family members and we want to give them uh, the best of our love. And sometimes we give our children, our spouses, our parents, we give them words of love, we give them service, we give them gifts, and we give them affection. All four. Check, 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 check. Everything. And I'm telling you, all four will be multiplied by zero if you don't have number five. If you, if you have all four perfectly and you don't have number five, it doesn't count. You will not have a healthy relationship with anybody. So what is this crazy number five? I call it space. I call it what? Space. I'm, I'm not referring to Buzz Lightyear, you know, but let me just explain what I mean by that by giving you a couple of examples of space, okay? I'll first pick on... Uh, I, I picked on the ladies yesterday. Let me pick on the guys. It's okay. You can, you can handle it. Uh, let's, just, let's just say there's a girl named Zainab who's got an older sister. And Zainab got a marriage proposal. And she's thinking about the marriage proposal. But she wants to talk to her older sister, Fatima. If there's a Zainab in the audience and a Fatima in the audience, do apologies. Okay. So Zainab goes to who? Fatima. And she says to Fatima, Hey, uh, Fatima, uh, can I talk to you for a second? And here's Fatima. Uh-huh. Yeah. What is it? You know that proposal from Abdul Karim? Sorry, Abdul Karim. Yeah, I'm really thinking about it, but I'm confused because his, his beard, I don't know if it's too long or not long enough. I don't know. And Fatima's like, mm-hmm, yeah, whatever, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Zainab says to Fatima, Zainab says, Fatima, can you just, can you put that down for a second? I just, can you just talk to me for a second? I'm listening. I can listen and do this at the same time. It's called multitasking. You should try it sometime. Zainab says, please, Fatima, just please, just one minute. And here, here's Fatima for you. Go ahead. Now the problem with that, Zainab came to Fatima asking for what? I would call that space. Don't confuse space with attention. Right now, you're paying attention to what I'm saying, I think. That doesn't mean you're giving me space. Here's what space means. I can tell you what's important to me. I can tell you what's important to me. And you will listen to it as if it is important to you. And you will respond not in a way that you want, in a way that pleases you. You will respond in a way that cares for me, my concern, my worry, my happiness, my joy, my fear, for those moments became yours. You took them on. I trust you so much that I can share something so personal, so intimate, so private, so scary, so happy with you that I know when I share it with you, I'm sharing it with someone who I'm perfectly safe with. They are safe to give me their space. It's not the same as paying attention. You can pay attention to the police officer who pulls you over after speeding. You're not giving him space, but you are paying attention. So don't confuse this with attention. Now, let's take another scenario. How many married men here? Inna lillahi wa inna ilihi raji'un. This one goes out to you, fellas. You and I gotta talk. You go on a road trip with your wife. Inna lillahi wa inna ilihi raji'un. No children, just you and the wife. It's you and the wife. And the thing with that is, the thing with that is, you're driving, you're looking at the road. You're looking through your rear view mirror. You're looking, she ain't looking at none of that. She's looking straight at you. And you can tell there's like, there's a laser beam kind of, <laughs> you can feel, feel a burning sensation on the side of your face. But you can't. <laughs> but anyway, that's because, here's the thing guys, she did something the, the night before. She insulted your mother in some indirect way. Or she said something like, well, you know, that's just how you were raised, right? She made a comment like that. It wasn't so direct, but it hurt. But you didn't say anything. But it's here. And you're driving, and the thing with guys, we can speak personally, it's okay. Let's pretend they're not listening. The thing with us is, 
we can't hide it. We're really bad at that. So if something's bothering you and you're driving, it shows on your face. And she has made her career reading your face. So now you're driving and she's doing what? Problem detected. So then when her scan is complete, she asks you one of the most dangerous questions you've ever experienced in your life. What you thinking? Every man here knows who's married. That question, that, that question, wallahi, that, like, if there's one thing that reminds you of Malakul Maut, it is that question. <laughs> that question. Okay. So she says, what you, and now you're thinking, should I, should I say what I, what I'm thinking? Should I say, hey, last night you said this comment about how I was raised and it really hurt my feelings. And I just, I would never say something like that to you. And I just didn't expect it. And I just, I'm just so, you know, like, why would you say something like that? You could say that, but you're like, nah, <laughs> so I choose life. So you say, oh, the project at work, it's so much, oh my God, my boss, the deadline, right? But you haven't developed good acting skills yet. So she, she tells, she can tell that the response you gave is invalid. So she says, you know, you can tell me, right? You know, you can tell me. And you say, no, 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 no nothing, nothing. That's nothing. What are you talking about? And then she looks at you and she says, oh, she, she does either one of two things. Okay. She either becomes the khatib. Okay. Or, or the, the khatib, I call it the bad cop or the good cop. Let me just give you both scenarios. Here's the bad cop scenario, but then I'll give you the khatib. The bad cop is, oh, you don't want to tell me? Fine, fine. No, it's fine. It's okay. You don't have to tell me at all. No, no. Don't tell me. Let's play that game. Oh, ho, 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 ho. now this, this this is the point where you'll be like, okay, 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 I'll tell you everything. But she's another, not you, women in Ohio. It's not you. Okay. It's you three or something. Okay. So the other scenario is she says, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am your libas and you're my libas. I should be able to share anything with you and feel like you listen and you should be able to share anything with me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the khutbah he became the khatib, right? The khatib, right? And at the end, and she's saying it and sick, like, you know, I thought marriage is going to be about trust. And if you can't even trust me with what you're feeling, then what's even the point? I thought Okay, okay, okay. She's saying, you can trust me. I, you can tell me anything. It's fine. I will listen. I will give you space. She's saying, I will, just believe me. I will give you space. You're like, okay. All right. So here's what happened. Yesterday, you said that and you tell your story. And then you're, you're like, okay, I'm glad she gave me space. I could tell her that. Oh, that was, that was easier than I thought. Stupid. <laughs> Here's what's about to happen. Then you're like, then you're driving in happiness, but you notice that the, you don't feel the laser beam, but there's a certain cold temperature here all of a sudden. And you notice that she's staring straight out the window. She's not even looking at you. She's looking at the endless nothingness that is Michigan. Uh, right? And she's just <laughs> so she's looking at that. And then you're like, well, uh, say something. Say something. And she'll say, I'll say this in Urdu first, it's more fun. What, what, what can I say? You just said, you said everything already for me to say. What's even the point now? You know what? I felt like when I married someone, I would feel safe from them. I can't believe you said that to me. I hurt you? What about me? What about, you know what? You and your mother, I've had enough. Just take me home. Just take, I, do, I don't even want to talk. Just don't even talk to me. And you're driving, you're like, you just, you just told me to say. It's like she was saying, step on the line, mind. Step on it, just step on it. Do it, do it, do it. And you step on it and it blows up and you're like, I, just, I don't know how you convinced me of this. 
the, the reason I'm telling you this crazy story, it comes back to Ya'abati, I'll tell you how, and it's crazy. Uh, the next time you're driving on a road trip with your wife and she says, what's wrong? Or what you thinking? What you gonna do? Work. Stomach ache. Headache. Allergies. Other kids. Oh, my parents. You know, the weather in South Africa. You will come up with every answer except what? What you're actually thinking. And you know why? Because she taught you that she is not qualified to give you space. So she is not the right person to, to open up to because she makes it about herself. What did I say about space? When you give someone space, it's not about you, it's about them. I was picking on you for no reason. You, they can do that. I'm just giving a scenario, right? So this works both ways. And this works between parents and children, husband and wife, wife and husband, brother and sister. This works in all kinds of relationships. Now the problem with this is, let's talk about marriage for a second. Okay, so it's been a couple of years where you didn't give, she didn't give you space. And by the way, when someone doesn't give you space, then you're not also able to give them space. And when you're not able to find space in your life, especially with your spouse, then you feel incredibly lonely. You feel it's a really lonely place to be. You're married, you're living under the same roof, but you're really lonely. And that's when Shaitan comes and says, I can help with that. And then, depending on your social media platform, you'll get a DM. I will, I will underscore, give you underscore, lots of space, xx.o. What are you going through? You look like you're upset. I could tell, I could see the sadness in your profile picture. Really? Good observation, because the profile picture was sadness, but Allah can help. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're trying to find space in places that aren't meant for you by Allah's law, by Allah's guidance. Because you didn't get space where you were supposed to get it. Kids that didn't find space with their parents, that they should be able to talk about anything on their mind, anything at all, anything that happened at school, right? They should be able to say it freely and they will, the parents will listen to them as if they can embody the emotions of their child when they're listening to them, see it from their perspective. If they didn't develop that, you can give your boy and your girl the best school, which is a gift. You can wash their clothes, which is a service. You can tell them, I love you. You can, give, you can give them all the hugs in the world, but you fail to give them what? Space. A time will come slowly that that space will be given by their friends. Then that space will be given by influencers online. Then that space will be given by other, 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 other. And they are sitting on the same dinner table as you and they are not there. Their soul isn't there. It's somewhere else. And the second they're done eating a single bite, they say, can I go? Can I go to my room? Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Why, are they, why do they want to go so bad? Why are they in their phone so bad? Because something or something on that phone is giving them what? Space that they no longer find in their family. Everything looks picture perfect on the outside. It's gone. And then those kids, when they're old enough, when they're 8, 17, 18, when they're a little bit more independent, all of a sudden, I'm moving out. I'm leaving. Yeah, I don't feel like praying. Mom, you can't tell me to pray anymore. It triggers me. But I put you in Islamic school. Oh, you did hivs. Yeah, I didn't feel like doing it. You didn't want to hear it. I was really, I was anxious every day. I had anxiety every day. I've been talking to a therapist. You have a therapist? Yep, I have a therapist. But now I can tell you that because you can't legally say anything about it anymore. You traumatized me with your Islamic education. What? I thought I was giving you a good life. I thought I gave you a good education. I tried to take care of you. And all of a sudden, all the, the, the words of love, the service, the, you know, the, the gifts, the affection, all of it multiplied by what? Zero. Because what wasn't there from the beginning? Who fought their space? Not, space is not you telling them something. Space is when they tell you something. When the boy comes to the father and says, Ya Abati, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban. Now think about Yusuf for a second. He was not in the company of his father for long, was he? Where did he go from there? He went from one traumatic situation to another traumatic situation to another traumatic situation. And in all of those situations, the people he was surrounded with 
you cannot characterize them as good company. He has spent his entire formidable years, his vulnerable years have been spent around bad company. In fact, his youth has been sent inside a, spent inside a prison cell, right? And in a prison cell, I'm pretty sure you don't have good company. And yet he's holding on to his faith. How? What Islamic education, what did he memorize? What ijazah did he get? What shaykh did he have? That he's holding on to his faith in all of those bad environments, it seems, in early childhood, when a child receives the right kind of space from a loving father and mother, that that can carry over for the rest of their life. This is the most important tarbiyah of all. The point that even a child, a child can even tell you what they're dreaming. And they know that dad will listen to it because it's important. You know, my, my daughters, when they were younger, girls talk a lot uh, in Ohio and in New York. When they used to be in New York. Uh, when I would pick my girls up from school, they wouldn't stop talking. Preschool girls won't stop talking. Girls do two things a lot. They giggle a lot and they talk a lot. And sometimes they do both at the same time. <laughs> so my girls, they sit in the back. You know what happened today? I had a fight with Fatima and I took my friendship bracelet from her. Then I gave it to Zainab, but we had to, we made a new friend, Mariam. So we had to break the bracelet into two. And now we have two bracelets, but it's only a little bit of beads. But then the third friend came and now we don't have enough bracelets. So I don't know what to do. And I'm keeping up with the bracelet geopolitics of the, of the kindergarten. I'm keeping up, I'm keeping, because they talk really fast and it's, I got to keep up because I got to give them space, right? But, you know, eventually you tune out. And when you tune out, you just say, uh-huh, mm -hmm, yeah, that's good. Mashallah, yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. And these girls are so smart. They know when you're just on autopilot. So you're on autopilot, yeah, mashallah. They're like, yeah, when we go home, I'm going to poke my brother's eye. And you're like, mashallah, good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> The first, the most important lesson I want to leave you with is do you actually find space in your closest relationships? Do you actually find that? Do you find that space with your siblings, your mom, your dad, your brother, your wife, your husband, your, your children that are adults now, some of you are older, your children that are adults now, do you find space with them? Or did they, the moment the two words come out of your mouth, they say, oh, here we go again. You know what that means? There is no what? There is no space. I don't want to leave you with this. this I, what, what I want to make sure you do after you leave here is you actually have real conversation about what your relationships look like. Because I want all of our relationships to improve. All of them. We all have troubles in our families. We all have drama. In, no, there's nobody who doesn't have drama in their family. If you're sitting around saying, why can't we have a normal family? Well, Allah didn't even give prophets a normal family. So calm down. Nuh alayhi salam had a psychotic wife. Ibrahim alayhi salam had a terrible father. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam had horrible uncles. Who's got a normal, Yusuf alayhi salam, siblings? Adam alayhi salam's kids? One killed the other. This is some pretty intense stuff. What is Allah teaching us? The best people can have very difficult what? Families. The best people can have very difficult families. So it's okay if you have family drama, family difficulty. But I, I do want to give you one more piece from this story. That has to do with space. What, have, what if you give all five? All five. But all five are rejected. All five are rejected. Yaqub alayhi salam was a prophet, right? And he's a he's a Muslim. He's a he's a prophet. And his kids are Muslim, and he's telling his son, "Son, I love you. I don't want to hear it. Just tell this to Yusuf. Psst. You don't love me. Just don't. Why are you even bothering saying it to me? Son, just just come here. Give me a hug. No, no, no. I don't need your hugs. You know what? Who needs your hugs? Go hug Yusuf. We all know you love him better anyway. Why are you in pretending? Here, son, I made this gift for you. Yeah, no, you didn't make it for me. What, did Yusuf did not like it? Is that why you're giving it to me? Son, I'm trying to do something. I don't need your help. I don't need your service. I don't need your words. I don't need your gifts. I don't need your affection. Son, talk to me. Just tell me how you're... Why would I tell you how I feel? I don't want to talk to you. Shh. 
I talk to you? No, you hurt my mom's feelings. That's a, there's a backstory to that too, I'll tell you one day. They are rejecting everything that their father is giving them. Their father is giving them every, every dimension of love, but they built a wall. They built a wall. And that wall was so strong that Yaqub knew السلام, that he cannot get through to them. So he had to tell his son, watch out for them because even I can't get through to them. So you know what? They will do something that's out of my control. What I'm trying to tell you is, it's not always your fault. What I'm trying to tell you is, maybe you're doing everything you can, but the other person has decided to what? Put up a wall. And when they put up a wall, if you're from many Muslim countries, you, are, you have been programmed and conditioned to blame yourself every time. You just blame yourself. I must not be giving enough love. I must not be giving enough gifts. I must not be doing enough service. I must not be offering myself more. So you keep laying yourself out in front of someone and they keep rejecting and rejecting and rejecting. And you keep, you keep chasing and they keep running. You keep chasing and they keep running. Does that happen? In Ohio, yeah. And when that happens, what you have to realize is you, you're only making the problem worse by chasing. And you're losing your self-respect by chasing. If you hurt someone's feelings and you have to apologize, apologize. But don't live in apology. Allah asks for one sincere istighfar and He forgives. And human beings want you to ask for their forgiveness. Life. I said, I'm sorry. Wasn't sorry enough. And they keep wanting to, they want you to live in istighfar. Allah wants humility. Human beings want more sajda than Allah. Don't fall, don't fall into emotional surrender to other human beings. Even if you wronged someone, sincerely apologize to them. Offer them the opportunity to make things right. If they choose not to do that, you did your part. Stop living in guilt that they built a wall. Stop living in guilt that you're not able to make things perfect. Don't do that. And if you cannot, if you don't take this advice, the price you will pay, and I pray none of you have to pay that price, is that you'll end up just losing your self-respect. You just you'll live your life trying to please somebody who can't be pleased. Make someone happy who can't be made happy. Make someone love you who doesn't want to love you. That's what you'll end up doing your whole life. You'll be miserable. And then a lot of people live like that and then they say, but I'm making so much dua that this person breaks their wall. Allah is not answering my dua. Then you come to speakers and say, how come Allah doesn't answer certain duas? I keep making so much dua but it's not being answered. I was like, who are you trying to change? And Allah is not changing. Why are your du'as about changing someone else? Your du'as should be about softening the heart towards Allah first. Ya Allah guide. Ya Allah guide. When Allah guides somebody's heart, all the other matters start getting sorted out. But that's not up to us. We cannot just wish someone's decisions away. They have to take steps themselves, right? We have to, we have to re recognize that. So I, I, I wanted to share that with you because every bit of a story in the Quran has an entire treasure trove behind it, right? And there's so much to learn from practically for our lives from the smallest of things, from the smallest, smallest of things. Now, some of you are very inspired by today's discussion. So you're going to call your dad right now and say, my beloved father, I saw myself eating samosas last night for dinner in my dream but by the way even if you just even if you just try this my beloved father on the phone with your dad you know what he would most likely do <laughs> talk to your mother <laughs> most likely do. but i mean genuinely let's let's I, I pray that allah gives all of us genuine deep relationships in our family that protect us in every way that we that that, that we should be protected allah has given us in the Quran, the instruction to have taqwa of him, and he's given us instruction to have taqwa of family ties. Those are family ties. I have taqwa of family ties. So the, the same way, in the same ayah that we should be mindful and cautious of God, we should be mindful and cautious of family ties. And just like we don't want to do anything to hamper our relationship with Allah, then if we messed up, we fix it. The same way we should do everything we can to preserve and to nurture our relationship with our loved ones. And if we messed up, we got to work on fixing it.